Hi, everyone. It's Ina and Denise again. I'm Denise. I'm an intuitive artist, and I'm really drawn to the indigenous cultures because they do work from the heart and are centered around the heart. And this is Ina. Most of you all know Ina. She is an energy practitioner. She works multidimensionally. And we have been brought together and are really passionate about creating this chat series, um, a supportive community for us, for you guys, um, just to create some like-minded people and some interesting conversation as we move into this new way of being. I want to share with you our uh, our mission. And it, so we're here to support and co-create with you as we unfold into this new way of being. And we're working together to master our energy as well as giving us permission to move into the old by being okay with who we are. Mm -hmm. um, so let's envision and imagine and bring forth the presence of the new earth together. I just got chills. <laughs> <laughs> I just got chills. Uh, thank you, Denise. I just want to say welcome to everyone. Welcome. And thank you for have, sharing the space with me. Um, this is going to be exciting, this conversation. This is something that Denise and I have been talking about for a really long time. Um, so I'm just going to go over kind of what this conversation is going to entail. So you have a little bit of structure. I am going to put the chapters, uh, maybe not right away, but hopefully put the chapters in there so you can skip to the different points of conversation. Um, so if something really resonates with you or you need to hear it again, you're able to skip ahead um, with timestamps. So we are going to be setting an intention for this conversation so that everyone here who is watching throughout the quantum space, whether you are watching the day that we release it or way down the line, that you receive all of that energy that you need um, and all of that assistance that you need. So it's always timely. Um, everything is always in the present moment. So just know that whenever you catch this conversation, it is meant to be. Um, and then we are going to um, kind of go through this series of of things that we have kind of laid out that we feel is important around this conversation. So I'm just going to let you know, we're going to be setting an intention. We're going to go into a meditation that I've been guided to share. Um, then we'll get into the conversation itself and kind of just perspective from Denise and perspective from me. Um, our personal experience with this ascension process and with these emotions and things that we're going to be talking about emotion, um, and then we'll get into some solutions. So some things that you can really use in your practice, or maybe things that you have used a long time ago, and now you're remembering again, and you can bring those into play. Um, and then we're just going to talk about what do you do once you have moved that through you, you want to recreate that in the way that you want that you want it to come through in your desire. We that is part of, well, it's a lot of our work right now. And we'll get into why we believe that. And then we'll end with um, moments of silence, which Denise is going to lead, which was really beautiful last time. So if you haven't watched the last conversation, make sure you go back and watch our very first one. This is the second one. And then we'll do some closing, just a closing saying goodbye. Um, feel free to drop your comments in there. That's really helpful for us to know what content and what topics to cover for you. And if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do that. Check out Denise's information. I am going to put a link in there. So you can contact her if you'd like to. Um, and yeah, well, let's get started. Anything you wanted to add to that, Denise, before I? No, that sounds good. Okay. You covered perfect. everything. Okay, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> we, I do want to say we are, we have made a rough structure, but we are working on approaching things with no planning, per se, like over over planning, which I think is the new way of being as well, is just showing up and being present and working with what happens in your surroundings and making the choice in the moment. Beautiful. Ina's Thank you. Frozen. Yeah, you were too a little bit. <laughs> am I back? You froze, Ina. Oh, am I, I was. <laughs> okay. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I see this catch is a little bit unstable. So apologies for that, everyone. Thank you for that reminder, Denise, because I tend to come, I still tend to come from here. So it's a work in progress for all of us. We are like undoing a lot of programming, a lot of programming. So thank you for that. Um, 
Okay, so mm -hmm. our topic today, we're going to be talking about the emotion and the energy of rejection. And I know this feels a little bit heavy and maybe like, ugh, but there is a lot tied up in rejection, like a ton of stuff tied up in rejection. And so we'll kind of go down the rabbit hole, but not in the sense of, oh, we want to be in misery and, and go into those healing loops. We want to talk about how it's connected, how it's a daisy chain and how it can pull you in, but you don't need to go there because that's not the new paradigm anymore. What would you like to, what do you think, Denise? What would you like to introduce it as? Yeah, I think, um, I think that's so true. Like learning how to not be pulled into it and sucked into that black hole of rejection <laughs> and how icky it feels and l learning some new ways of moving out of it or some old ways, like you said, that you've learned before. I think that's perfect. I'm excited to have the conversation. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a juicy one for sure. Um, okay, so let's get started with the meditation. This is a meditation that was gifted to me not that long ago um, as I was working with a client, and I think it's really special. So we're going to do, I just call it liquid gold. So we're just going to settle in right now closing your eyes, making sure your devices that are around you are off or quiet, silent. And I'm gonna ask that you place palms up. You can do a mudra if you'd like to. So that's just kind of receiving. This is like, you know, your holy trinity we're receiving from the expanded realms. Or if you have another mudra you'd like to use, go ahead and do that. I'd like you to follow your breath. And just be aware of the breath and where it might be a little bit contracted in your body. And just releasing any judgment or any uh, you know, perceptions that you have about why it is the way it is. Release the stories. Don't connect anything. If you can, just kind of disconnect. Just watch the breath. Just be observant of you as a human breathing. And as you come to this next breath, feeling yourself anchoring in the bottoms of the feet, the backs of the legs to the seat of the chair or the floor. Feel your heart lifting a bit and the solar plexing, plexus opening up as you lift the heart a bit, tucking the chin and dropping the shoulders. On the next inhale, imagine that you are being gifted the most beautiful liquid gold coming from above in the heavens and up from the feet from Gaia. It's pouring and gushing in through the soul star chakra, the crown chakra, up through the feet chakras. Just so fluid and so peaceful, shiny, shiny gold, almost blinding gold. If you can imagine mercury, this is what, this is the quality but it's gold and bringing that energy up in down through all of the chakras, major and minor, reaching the cellular level, reaching through the bones, the blood, the skin, the tissue, the fascia, the muscles, the tendons, all the way down to the subatomic level, major organs, pulsing through really, really sweetly. So it may feel nice and warm, it might feel cool, it's whatever your body needs, but it's viscous and it's just moving really nicely through the arms, the elbows down, through the fingers and hands. And with the movement, filling the body, you're noticing that the body is feeling lighter, less tense, muscles are relaxing. And feel that fill up through the stomach. So the sacral, the vagus nerve, and just bringing every bit of your nervous system back into regulation, back into homeostasis, reaching through the heart as well, giving you that grounding and safety. And as you recognize that your entire body is filled up with this liquid gold, start to notice that this gold is getting more stable. In other words, it's getting thicker. It's creating this pillar within you as it hardens and creates stability 
So now liquid going to solid form, creating this golden energy that's living through you throughout this entire conversation. Feeling more grounded and peaceful, feeling solid and secure, feeling powerful. And we're just going to ask that everyone on this call at any moment in, in quote unquote time, in the present moment, that they receive everything that they need to work through these emotions of rejection and so forth, to release them for good and to find the connections that they need to move through anything that might pop up. And then as you come back to the heart space, if you have another intention, just put that out in the ethers for us. I'm gonna come back to the heart space and then slowly open the eyes. Mm. That was so nice. <clears throat> I needed that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Knocked around. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we're being knocked around. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Oh. Where should we start? Okay. Um, well, I know last week I was feeling a lot of rejection, like it was just coming up for me. Um what about for you. Yeah, I struggle with that in very odd ways. It comes through, I'm going to say through the back door. So I don't really recognize it until, because I think rejection, like the actual emotion of rejection is a bit insidious because there's stuff underneath it, right? So it doesn't always, we're not always aware that we are feeling rejected um, mm -hmm. because it shows up as fear. It shows up as anger. Um, it shows up as uh, grief. There's all kinds of things. Like when you feel it, Denise, what, like when you were feeling it last week, what were you, what were those feelings for you? I was feeling, for me, it was coming up for, you know, various reasons. I think some things that have been happening and I think are going to happen for people and myself included in the future are the dynamics of relationships or things shifting and um trying to understand that and i i was feeling like unloved mm. i felt and i think i tied rejection into that like i'm not worthy or i'm not enough um which i think to me like i'm unlovable i'm like that's where it goes down for me yeah. into that core what about you that does that resonate it does resonate a lot um and I think I get triggers you know when I don't even realize like maybe I'm speaking for myself when I say like sometimes it's just hard to realize that's what you're feeling reject like you're feeling rejected you know but mm -hmm. I think it's exactly what you said like when you when we feel when we feel unheard or not seen um or even for those of us, me personally, have like grown up in, in a family system where like everything is black and white and everything is as, you know, the adults say it is and, and your identity is tied up in what the adults feel. And it's not to blame everybody, but they're just kind of giving context to everything and informing everything. Like, I think coming out of like, um, Growing up with dysfunction like that, which I think everybody on the planet has <laughs> similar, you yeah. know, because it's just someone else's perceptions of what should be like, it's another perception of what another person should be. And this is one of the things we're going to talk about, like how this judgment is falling away. Right. So being aware of the fact that that's someone else's perception, it's not necessarily something that we need to take personally, you know, Yeah. but we do because we're very tuned in, especially as empaths or people that are very tuned in to the world and energies and frequencies, like we take it personally. And so removing myself from the personal part of it has been a very long journey. It's been a really long journey. So I kind of got off track there, but I think just those feelings of like, not like you said, really lit up when you said not being heard or seen or understood, it makes us feel very different. And 
Mm -hmm. like as a creative I struggle with that I don't know about you like oh yeah and creative I feel like I've yes I feel like growing up I've definitely felt unheard and unseen in many ways and being different too like at school um I had I was labeled as dyslexia with the, or dyslexic, which I didn't know until I was older. But just having this different learning, this different way of processing, um, really put some scars, you know, wounds in in different people. And it's sad to say with our education system yeah. and how it's a lot of. I think a lot of people feel this way. But um, I was going to say something with the rejection with what you were talking about. Oh, just being went past heard. it was about being heard oh um <clears throat> I think our conditioning is really we seek a lot of validation from people yes so 100%. not a hundred percent I feel like our education system is all about validation with our parents our family systems we have I, at least I do I feel like this strong I need to have validation being an artist you know a lot of oh I could tell I have seen that my um my oh my gosh my words are I'm at a loss of words my the force behind is to get validation and I don't yes. want that I want to find my own inner voice for me but the fear of rejection is there so it's it's kind of letting go of having to have this validation too that is, that's an amazing point because right now too, with the work that we are all doing here on the planet, it's like you add together like our lived experience in the human plane. And then you have our cosmic, we want to go into the quantum experience of rejection and what it's meant to be here at a time when the planet is rising and ascending. And then you have a whole messy stuff with it, like all this messy stuff about like, imprints and history of not being validated or of being harmed or being ostracized or made fun of or I mean there's like all of that too and we won't go too far into that but yeah I think you make a really good point like all of the systems like let's go back to that because that's what's coming up like that's what's changing right now these systems are breaking down so pretty much every single system that exists on the planet right now like and I think you all know what I'm talking about like the matrix system, right? If we'll call it that power systems are all about validation. It's all mm -hmm. about doing what another believes is right for you. That's, it really is, right? So what happens when we start, like Denise and I were throwing a bunch of questions out yesterday, we were talking and we we're like, what happens when you start stepping out of that, somebody else's perceptions and their need to be validated? What happens, right? Like you get chaos, you get I'll never forget, like I had a therapist who said, when you change your behaviors and you are more aligned with yourself, like one of two or three things are going to happen. The person that you are changing, like changing, like people around you will either come with you, they will completely resist and reject, mm -hmm. or they're somewhere in between, right? Like eventually, right? And that's what's happening right now on the planet, I think. And so don't you think? Like, yeah, I yes, like people, it's upsetting us, each of us individually inside because we're being shaken up yeah. and we're being asked to do new things. Yeah. And it doesn't, when someone else does something different than what you're used to, I don't know about you guys, but I like control. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute, you didn't tell me you were going to, you know, do it this way this time. But I think it's, and for us too, I think we're all going to be called and are being called to do things in a different way. And the fear of rejection to stepping out into our, into what we're being asked to do, whether it's our soul or we're just feeling it in our heart, whatever the reason is, but. Absolutely. I mean, it's yes. such it's so important, like, because that goes into your intuition, to your heart, like Denise is, Denise works a lot in the heart space and really listening to the heart and coming into this like coherence where your mind and your heart and your heart and your outer world are meeting, right? So like, that's that's the goal with Ascension too. That's one of the many goals, I think. Um, but I think you said that so well, like 
this is exactly what's happening. It's not just about feeling these feelings of rejection. It's like all of this is the feelings of rejection and everything that go with that of not being able to be yourself and, and shine your light really brightly and feeling like you're not dull, like you don't have to dull yourself, you know, because of others' opinions or perceptions or judgments. Like that's a big theme right now. And I think one of the reasons we're bringing it forth is because not only are we feeling it, but I'm sure all of you are seeing it and feeling it as well. And it's like, oh, here it is again, right? Here it is again. But that's part of what we're here for, right? We're here to shine our yeah. light. We're here to break it down. Yes, we are here to break it down. And it's very exciting. It is very exciting. Going, it's very scary. <laughs> it's very scary, right? Because and that's why we're having these conversations every day. Because it's like you yeah. know, the power in numbers, and we can all help each other. Because it's not, and it's not this like, oh, I mean, it's not this like pitchforks and power. You know, we're not. That's not where we're coming from. We're coming from a place mm -hmm. of peace. Like when we deal with these feelings and these triggers ourselves, when we start with us, it's amazing how much the collective will shift because you are exuding that, right? So it's super important that we bring it back. We keep bringing it back in, which is why we have been in the space of the unknown for so long, like since March, April, like we've been mm -hmm. in this space of like nothingness. And I really, I really believe, I want to hear what you have to say about this, Denise. Like, I really believe we are being put here because we've got to pull up all of the weeds. Like we're talking about one of them being rejection and invalidation and, we yeah. got to pull it all up and get ourselves ready because the light that's coming in now and, you know, very, very soon we're going to have some big influxes of light. Like that's just a given. Yes. Um, you have to be, we have to be ready. Otherwise, if you can't hold that, all the stuff's going to come up at mm -hmm. once and it's really uncomfortable. It's already uncomfortable. Yeah. So imagine if you, right, haven't done that inner stuff. What do you think? Well, and I think too, I think exactly, I think we're, all of this stuff is coming up. It might feel old. It's uncomfortable, but it is when it comes up. One of the things I remind myself is that it's coming up to be released. It's not, not me. It's old. It's just being released. It's creating more room for the light. And I think everyone here on the call is, um, it will, everyone matters. Every single person matters. We all influence each other. So what we do is going to influence the whole. And I think that is extremely important to remember because we, you know, we're told growing up, we don't matter. Yeah. You know, and we do each one of us. We're so powerful that, and we matter. And when this happens, the, you, there's 8 billion people on the planet. And I think each of us who are on this call are going to be called to hold this space or to support other people. Or, I mean, I get chills right now because a lot of people aren't going to really know what's going on on the level I think that that we understand consciously. I think it's gonna go in waves um, when people are releasing and, and letting go. So yeah, the more we can heal this or shift the perspective, let it go, the easier it is gonna to be to take in the light, we'll have more space in us. Exactly, exactly. And it's it's neither, right or wrong or like we're just all in a different like you said in these different waves of a journey and part of it is that we have already been through that so we're able we'll be able to help others go through that too in our own ways and it doesn't mean mm -hmm. you've got to jump in the ring and like be a healer and all this kind of stuff that's not what it means it means that no. you are just in a space of peace and um, we'll talk about some of the solutions that you can use to go through that but um and it is just as simple as that, like just yeah. holding the space of peace in your heart. Exactly. Simple, but mm -hmm. I'm hearing also like when you're in that journey, it's hard. <laughs> like Denise simple has been mean like, easy. yeah, exactly. We've been like, why yeah. is this so hard? We feel it's so bad. <laughs> just yeah, going like, you know, it doesn't feel good because it's coming up. And it's like, I've had a lot of people say like, who have probably disagreed with what, I believe, which is, I believe, and Denise and I have been talking about this. So I think we should address this. Like the healing journey, truly, I feel like the healing journey, at least for star seeds and light workers, like, I don't want to make a blanket statement for everybody, but if you've been on this journey and you are resonating with this for a long time, even if it's been two, three years, 
you've if you've been two three years you've done the fast track so you've been gone deep fast track but if you've been on for 10 20 30 years like you've done it it's done like Denise and I feel really strongly that the more that we give that energy that healing journey energy the more it's going to perpetuate and that slows down the progress of the rising consciousness because we're all still stuck in that space we're still in that space so um one of one of the purposes of us doing this these chats is to kind of address them and be like yes that's still there it's an imprint it's an imprint that's still there just like residue when you clean something out like i'm trying to give you know like you have a bucket and you rinse it out say it had dirt in there and you rinse it out there's still a scum and a film on the bucket right so you still have to get in there and scrub it and get rid of it so that's kind of what I, they're showing me is like that's the stuff we're just scrubbing away the scum of eons literally eons of stuff and so we can't expect to be feeling really good in two or three months after literally going through eons of this stuff in the planet yeah, <clears throat> that's such a good point. Exactly. And and like you said, um, it's not about grabbing it and dissecting it, like grabbing the re rejection feeling, dissecting it like we used to do, at least I did, yeah. and trying to figure it all out, where it came from and why I have it, forgiveness. I think it's just acknowledging it, feeling it, um, letting it go and choosing something new. Yeah, that's so important, that choice point, choosing something new. Yeah, making a different choice. Because where we, and I'll repeat this a lot, and it's a reminder for myself too, but where we put our attention, it grows. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you do? And I know we'll get into this very soon about the solutions, but what, like, because I used to get to this place where, okay, I'm making a choice to move on, but the resistance was there. I like my point of view now is that I think the resistance isn't quite as strong as it used to be, or maybe because we have more awareness. I don't know how you feel mm -hmm. about that. Um, but when you get to this place where it's like, oh, there's that resistance, we can still choose and have a conversation with that resistance. Like, I think we just kind of back down because we've been so used to just be like, oh, we just, you know, but I think it's okay to kind of get our backs up and be like, no, I'm I'm choosing to move forward. I'm choosing to let this resistance go. Like, do you find that when you're yes. in that space? Yes, yeah. Like having a, not being as scared, maybe. Yeah. I think for me, like not being as scared about the feeling um, because it's uncomfortable. Like, re yeah. like going back to rejection, like it's just an uncomfortable, icky feeling. Yeah. And then just being okay to have a conversation. Like I'll have a conversation, you know, is that the truth, Denise? You know, asking a question, is that the truth? Are you really being rejected? And do you want to give that power to that person mm. um, to say that if you are, you know, good enough to be listened to or heard or seen or if you're worthy? So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I do. I kind of have conversations with it or, and then let it go. And if it comes back up and then let myself feel it. And if it's too much, like observe it maybe from outside. Like today I'm feeling kind of some weird feelings and letting myself say, oh, it's okay. Hey, it's okay to feel weird. It's okay to have this uncomfortable feeling right now. It doesn't mean anything about me. Ah, oh, yeah. I love that. That's really important. Like, it's like the rejecting the rejection. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, we're all really good at that, I think. <laughs> I mean, just human nature. Like, it's uncomfortable, like you said. So just being okay with, like, today I feel weird. Today, you know, I'm noticing these feelings. And we'll get into solutions soon. But um. I think I want to go back to like rejection and what normally like how it shows up for people because there might be people out there who are not are feeling weird feelings but not understanding or not being able to pinpoint that it is a, a feeling coming from rejection from being rejected yeah that's a great idea in a really long time um mm -hmm. so I know like when I've gone through triggers 
uh, it took me a long time to recognize that, and you said it first, which was so true, that I wasn't feeling seen or heard. And in that, um, that was a huge trigger for me personally, feeling rejected and being like, oh, I feel like nothing that I do is good enough, that I'm not important. Um, because I'm not being seen, I don't have value. Like you were saying, I don't feel worthy. Um, like I'm going to be stuck. It, it kind of pulls you into these feelings of, oh, I'm stuck. I don't know how to get out of that because you're so triggered. And that's that child stuff like gets triggered. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have a choice. I have to be in this. I have to be in this relationship. I have to listen to this person. Like you start going down the rabbit hole. So the, I think the number one thing is just awareness, pulling yourself out of that because in that judgment, we're also judging ourselves. So like you said, we're giving that person power to tell us how we really are feeling when that's not the case. Like, it's like, we're giving them, we're saying to them, okay, you take my power and then you get to decide how I feel. And yes, I'll feel that way. But that's really, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's this mm -hmm. weird kind of psyche thing. So if we can look at our, how like underneath that is maybe judgment, maybe that person is passing judgment on you and that doesn't feel good, but then it's an opportunity for us to look at ourselves. Are we, is that true? And how are we judging ourselves? Like, how do we yes. judge ourselves? How are we rejecting ourselves? How too? rejecting? Exactly. Exactly. Because I think, I think that's, that's the key point right there. Is the self that. for me is the, has been the self rejection. Yeah. And coming out of why does it feel uncomfortable to be us? You said it in the beginning. Why is it uncomfortable yes. for me? Like, that's a huge question. What, what yeah. is it about me that I can't accept mm -hmm. that I'm rejecting about myself that feels like I just want to be me. And sometimes judgment comes from the fact that we reject ourselves. A lot of times it does. Yeah. And even knowing like, who am I? <laughs> yes, because there's, and that's, what's going on now, right? We're just there's so much. tearing away so much stuff. Yes. From what other people yes. think and what other systems have told us we have to be. And it's like, when you tear all that away, I think that's another feeling. We're another way we're feeling, or sorry, another reason we're feeling so naked right now. Like we feel naked truly. Right. Because it's like, we've stripped mm -hmm. all this stuff away and then who are we? Yeah. Yeah. Who are we? Who are we? <laughs> exactly. It's a lot. Um, the last thing I just want to touch on, and we'll probably do a whole nother conversation about this before we go into solutions is giving yourself permission. You brought this up. I thought it was really beautiful. Can you talk about what that, like how that was coming through you? Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Remind me again, a little bit of, I, I think know we were, we were relationship. Kind of, yeah, I think we were saying like, because we judge ourselves and because we're in this, like feeling that rejection, we don't give ourselves permission to be who we are. Maybe that's kind of where we're coming from. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, because we're we're looking for other people to give us permission. Like it's okay for you to, to do this or to start that business or yeah, that's a great idea. You know, go ahead and do that. <laughs> you know, these are just little examples of, um, but even on a deeper level, like giving us permission to tell ourselves that we are okay. Yes. I mean, on a deeper level that, that I, you know, that I love myself, giving myself permission to love myself Yes. or to, you know, to start these chat sessions with you and create this community, giving ourselves permission for that. But, um, there was a strong link when we were talking about that with the rejection. Yeah, I think it was too, it was almost like giving ourselves permission to speak our truth. Um, oh, yes. Forward with truth, because right now, like as it, uh, as it aligns with the shift in consciousness, like, again, we've got imprints from when speaking our truth was not okay. And, yes. And being who we are in our metaphysical gifts and our creative gifts. And I mean, people who are on this path and who are, I, I, I think everyone on this path has an immense amount of creativity and ability to like tap in. Right. So when you're in that space, that's very different, very different than the status quo. And so 
giving ourselves permission as people who are here to do what we're doing um, can come with the fear of rejection in a big mm -hmm. way. Can really come with fear of rejection, even within yeah. within this community, right? Everyone has a different. Oh yes. About what's everyone has a different what's opinion. not, and yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, like how 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 do we let all of us be our unique selves? Yes. Because we all like even you know Ian and I vary a little bit on what we believe in and what we think and our perceptions and stuff, but that's normal because we all have a different perspective. Every single one of us has a different experience in life. So we're all going to have this different perspective. And I think honoring that, but, you know, I remember, um, I don't know, it's like a week and a half ago, we were talking about rejection and giving ourselves permission to also when we reject other people or it's not necessary, like giving us permission to do that on a, with this awareness of more of the frequency I think of shifting what rejection is like maybe you enjoy somebody a person but you're feeling you're not resonating on a certain way to get to know them more um, but giving yourself that permission to acknowledge that within yourself of what you're truly feeling and maybe you disagree with them and you want to say it um they're speaking your truth, but you're scared of the rejection from them. There's kind of several le levels in here that I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I know you're being very clear. Yep. yep. I am. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So giving yourself permission to maybe it's discernment, but discern and, and reject certain things or frequencies. And then also giving yourself permission to speak your truth where you might be rejected. That is so true. And I think we tend to, at least for me personally, I don't want to speak for everybody else. Drop it in the comments too about anything that we're speaking of that you feel we need to know, you know, just joining the conversation. Um, I think that even when we are, uh, how do I say it? Okay. As far as the discernment and the permission and rejection, like coming from, again, like I came from a family where things were very rigid and they were very black and light, white, and you didn't have an opinion. Like your opinion really wasn't, it was someone else's opinion. So that's, that's how I grew up. And so it's been very hard for me to discern. And when I do discern to actually say what Denise just said, which is, you know, I like you and this is, this is good, but there are things that I don't resonate with. There are things that I'm not in alignment with. That wasn't safe for me to do. And I think that's true for a lot of people and their experiences. Um, so really kind of practicing that muscle and saying that it's okay if you're not aligning with somebody. It doesn't have to be this big, huge, dramatic thing. Um, and for another person, it might feel hurtful to them. But if you are saying it in a kind way, like it's just not resonating with me, it doesn't feel good in my, you don't even have to say that, but just knowing to yourself, it doesn't feel good in my body. Like that's how I, it doesn't feel good in my heart space. It feels too much, you know, whatever it is, it's okay to say that and move through that and practice that, like flex that muscle a bit, especially now. Um, yeah. Because- I don't know. It's like, if you drop all of that away, if we just go into universal life force and like this, like the soul, like the soul doesn't feel anything, but just light. Like it just <clears throat> is, it's the human stuff that, that gets us all gnarly and mixed up and complex. It's the human stuff that's complex. So if you took yeah. out the emotions, right. Which is tied up in perception and judgment and all that kind of stuff. You took all that away, which is where we're going what's left it's just light it's just a beingness it just is you know mm -hmm. so if we can kind of remove like I'm practicing a lot of non-judgment because and, and my guides are reminding me every time I say something like no, a little judgmental like that doesn't check like change your words you know so mm -hmm. I think just to speak to that I don't know if anyone else is having that experience but it's really working those muscles because we're so used to just allowing love and light Yes. Love and light, love and light. We've been love and light, love and light. But that's yeah. But the journey, yeah. spiritual journey is not love and light. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
you know. No. <laughs> so giving like really permission. Ugly. Yeah, that is really, really like crazy, <laughs> ugly, ugly cry, all of that. So yeah, yeah, it's just I love what you just said. Thank you for that. Yeah. And I think, yeah, taking I love that taking away the judgment, taking away the story. Yeah. And it's not about good and bad, right and wrong. It's just about is that feeling how does that feel to me? Is that what I want? Yes. Is that feeling what I want in my, in my field or, yeah, you know, how do I feel around this yeah. situation or. Do you want to get into solutions? I know we've kind of given a lot of like solutions yes. as far as awareness, but does that feel good? We could go yeah. That. Well, the first thing I wanted to share um, when I was going through a lot of anxiety is breath work. Yeah. I found Wim Hof. He has. Um, some great breath work and I, he has a free mini course on his site. Um, so I've been doing that nice. and it's been really helping. It makes a difference. Nice. Um, I want to speak to that if you don't mind. I was doing breath work work last year a lot and the breath work recently for me, I've had to slow it down a bit. I just want to say for some people out there, it can be, um, it can kind of, quick in your nervous system it can it can over regulate like de dysregulate your nervous system so with caution like they're not it's not good for everyone just like everything isn't good for everyone it just depends on you individually so I've been doing deep breaths like long mm -hmm. slow deep breaths and holding it and releasing it that's worked for me in the past I love the Wim Hof method like that's been really good yeah and there's so many I'm glad you brought that up because there's so many different types of breath work exactly and I think it's finding what works for you I've tried it I've tried a ton yeah so it kind of whatever kind of go walk um walks into my path I try yeah and if it resonates with me at the time so yes definitely I love the one with the nose the nine, um, the the nine yep. yeah I love yeah. that one to me that just really um calms my whole system down yeah I don't think I said that right Nadi Shona it's been a while sorry to all of you I have no idea what it's there. called I forget <laughs> the, the English version is skull shining but I think it's yeah I think it's Nadi Shona I don't know anyway is it correct me okay. in the comments everybody if that's not right the yeah yeah I like it, that one it, too Anyone who, you know, has found a breath work that works for them. Um, I've heard of Soma too. There's, mm -hmm. like I said, there's just so many different ones. I've been doing, um, we'll consider this number two. I've been doing somatic movements. Not a lot of it. Um, Cause I'm a big yoga person, but I've kind of fallen away from yoga because I was just feeling a little bit bored with it. And like, it wasn't giving me the same feelings as before so I started a somatic like just somatic workout so I would just find things on YouTube and it's a lot like yoga you're breathing but you're moving your body and stretching your body really slowly um Ooh, and you're I love opening, that. yeah you're opening up like a lot of the fascia so I've been doing that because I've been feeling super tight and not sleeping well and stuff so looking for a somatic they call it a workout but just a practice um something this short or it's like five minutes or is you know, much longer if you need it. But that seems to really kind of get into the depths of stuff and calm me down. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas yoga sometimes, because I'm the type of yoga I practiced, I'm still, it's still in my being. It's like, sometimes you're, you're having to contract your muscles and do a bunch of things at one time. And this is just, it's just much more relaxing for me. Um, may not work for everybody, but somatic. Try, so try somatic exercises, people, if, if that resonates. Yeah, I love that. What else? That do really have? resonates. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, writing it through. So when you're feeling that rejection, just letting it move through your body, maybe slowing down. I love your, I mentioned this last time where you lay on the floor, Ina. You said lay on the ground yeah, and yeah. just feel your body. Maybe let yourself just feel that rejection for even two minutes fully in your body and whatever comes up. I mean, maybe some tears are going to come up, maybe anger. I think it's a I'm way for through. it to like merge. There's something about the floor that like everything mm -hmm. lands, you know, sometimes when we're laying on the bed or we're meditating or whatever, we're still not fully in our bodies. 
there's something mm -hmm. about being on the floor, hard floor that just like, I don't know, it's like that, that pro proprioceptive, I think it's called, but yeah, that's a good one. It feels different. It does feel different. And I, yes. I love what you're saying because then you can focus more, I think too, like it brings more focus. Like you said, like I, one thing I want to add to that is like, I like to label it. In other words, I'm feeling rejection, like, mm -hmm. like say it out loud or say it like, really firmly I'm feeling rejected I'm feeling re the emotions of rejection um and let yourself feel it it's so important to let yourself feel it mm -hmm. like, you don't have to be there forever and ever anymore you know um, yeah but I, love it. I think as females too we don't allow ourselves to feel yeah you no know? definitely yeah I love that what else do you have um be out in nature. I feel like nature regrounds me. So taking a walk, I have a dog, so I walk her quite a bit. Just that movement, kind of moving it through, moving that energy through with the intention and really setting intentions behind this. Like when you label it, like you were saying, that's so good. And just labeling it to know what it is, to let it go. Yeah, exactly. You know, or laying in there and breathing it through to let it go. Like just, I'm releasing this. It's coming up. I'm releasing. I like that. So, once do you have do you have other things? I don't want to jump forward. Do you have no? I think okay. that's because I wanted to add to that. If you don't mind, once you recognize what the feeling is, and as Denise is saying, you're letting it move through. We talked about earlier. If you're having a hard time moving it through, or you're feeling some resistance. Um, it doesn't sound like it would be effective, but if you can come to the awareness, it really is effective. Both Denise and I have experienced this where you're like, I'm making the choice to just be done with this. I'm making a choice to just not, not like I felt it. I know what it is. I've labeled it. I'm walking away from it. Like, this is not who I am right now. That might've been how I was back when I was a kid or back when I was blah, 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 or when I was in this relationship or when I went through that job. But right now, in this moment, this is not the same moment as it was historic. Like historically, this is not the same moment because every mm -hmm. moment is different. Every yeah. single moment, every nanosecond is different. Like if you think about that, that's pretty wild. Like this is not the same moment I was in when we talked two minutes ago. Like I'm in a new moment and I'm choosing not to be, to let this hold me down. I'm, I'm just yes. choosing something different. There was a moment- yes. Like a couple of weeks ago, I was in the kitchen. I think I told you about this. And I was just feeling funky and all these old stories were going through. I was like, oh God, again. And then I was feeling some kind of way about my partner. And I was like, it wasn't even real. It was such an illusion. It was based on yeah. old stuff. And I heard really loudly, you can choose to walk, like you can choose to walk away from that. You don't have to feel that. And it was like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, I just kind of went, what? It's like, I can't even tell. Like, yeah. I think we just again, because we've been in the healing space for so long and it's part of who we are as humans to just want to be the most expanded and best versions of ourselves. We're always kind of looking, especially people like us are looking at ourselves under a microscope. Like we can choose not to look at ourselves under a microscope anymore. We can just like slide, mm -hmm. look at it and go like, oh, there it is. Yep, that's it. And then pull the slide out and be done. Like, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And like, Example, like I choose self-love. I choose to accept myself Yeah. if I'm feeling rejection. Yes, yes. I love what you're saying because what's coming up right now is someone else may, you may perceive, let's say this, you may perceive that someone is rejecting you, but you don't have to agree with that perception. So okay. like, you exactly. know what I'm saying? And that's the story in your head. You don't even know if it's, that's the truth. Right. It's like- <laughs> That person's saying that and that's their perception, but am I rejecting myself? Like, do I have to reject yeah. myself too? No, I don't. Um, yeah. The last thing that I like to do too is just like write in a, either journal or make a list in my head or put post-its up or something of all the things that disprove that, right? Mm. So like whatever, however that person is rejecting, rejecting or you're perceiving them to reject you or whatever feelings are coming up, like- just kind of writing a list of, you know, what, like you said, loving yourself. What are the things I love about myself? You know, yeah. kind of countering that rejection because the rejection can feel huge. So if you can counter mm -hmm. all of, 
you know, with good, good experiences or good memories or, or qualities about yourself, like it really does help to kind of shrink that rejection and that, those feelings. Yeah, definitely. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Cool. I think anything to shift it, you know, shift yourself out once you've recognized it. Yeah. Because it's really the awareness. The awareness, I think it's good because it's popping. When we notice, it's a great thing because we're aware. We're not living unconsciously anymore. Yeah. We're like, whoa, feeling rejection. Do I want to feel this? Do I want to be in this energy? No. Yeah. I want to be in this energy and choosing this. Yeah. I love that. You've said that so many times and I hear your voice in my head a lot. Like, <laughs> we have a choice, <laughs> you know, we have a choice. We have a choice. And that's what we're coming out of this feeling. Yeah. Like, and I think it's an illusion that we don't have. It is an illusion that we don't have a choice. We've been programmed mm-hmm. and conditioned and we don't have a choice sometimes, you know, off we do, but yeah. you know what, uh, you all know what I'm talking about. So it's like, it's an illusion. Because we always yeah. have a choice. We always have a choice. Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. it. I love cool. It. Anything else on that front before we move on to this? Um, no, if anyone out there, if any of you guys have any solutions, again, please post them in the comments. Yeah. Um, so that's great. But I do, do we want to do the card? Oh yeah, we forgot to do the card. Let's I do, know. Let's do the card and let's jump into like the reminder of envisioning and and moving into that space. Oh yeah. Okay. We can do that. Do you want to do that? Do you want to do the reminder and then I'll do the card and then the meditation or? No, do the card. You're right. I totally okay, skipped okay. over the card. Right. That was me. This Sorry, is everyone. that's okay. This is the um. This is the deck I have. Their emotions. The. Oops. Ooh, I had a whole bunch flip out. <laughs> <laughs> so just kind of setting the intention of right. what this, what everybody needs to know. Right. I love that. Setting the intention of what everyone needs to know. All right. Here's our card. Oh, interesting. Sadness. Oh my gosh sadness came up okay okay so I wonder if behind rejection there's sadness let me see I gotta get my glasses on here yeah sadness where that is I think that's a really common feel we didn't even talk about that there's so much sadness underneath that yeah Oh my gosh, so much. Yeah, rejection, it's that feeling of loneliness and feeling alone and feeling not supported and abandoned. And so of course, yeah, there's going to be sadness under there. Okay, I'm trying to find the. <laughs> oh, here we go. So sadness can be demonized as unwanted, as an unwanted emotion, but it's part of being human. Without sadness, we cannot truly appreciate the other feelings that will come after and uplift us. The card is a reminder that sometimes you need to feel sadness in order to heal and return to normalcy. Like all things, it passes. And that's really good because it it does. That's another thing I remind myself of is that things, this emotion passes. These feelings pass, they change. Sometimes when you're in them, it just feels like you're never going to get out. Like you were saying earlier, you're stuck. Yeah. And when you kind of recognize it acknowledge it love it even loving the rejection because it's bringing you to a further understanding of yourself and a deeper love for yourself absolutely I think too it's a good release sadness because usually sadness comes with some tears right it's a good release it's a good way to just like cleanse the body Um, yeah yeah I love that yeah Uh, One other thing I want to mention is just coming into my mind. I heard um, from actually Joe Dispenza. I listen to a lot of him too, because he's got some interesting stuff to say in scientific research as well. But people can be addicted to emotions. Yes. Can become an addiction because it raises your, your cortisol and your adrenaline and your body's used to it. Dopamine. So that's yeah. something to kind of become aware of too within yourself. 
Oh, that's a really good point because I think that's one of the things that, you know, if you're, I know, like I always used to think, oh, I'm not addicted to anything. You know what I mean? Like addiction, you know, cause that's, that's a system that's falling away too, you know, as we start yeah. to kind of clean up things in our lives and start to really love ourselves at a deep level. It's like, that's going by the wayside too. And yeah, emotions and emotional roller coasters and relationships. It is addicting. Yeah. Yeah. Which is another thing. Again, it plays like this this period of silence that we are in of quiet, which we're going to get into like these, you know, four, five, six months going forward, these energies of just having to just sit and be and maybe things not going the way we have imagined or envisioned them to go, but just trusting and knowing that that silence and the stillness and the peace and the quiet is a way for us to come back to who we really are. It's not a bad thing. It, it feels sometimes like we're without, it feels like we are lacking in this space, but it's mm -hmm. actually coming back to who we are. We're gaining so much. We're gaining so much ability to see and know ourselves in ways that we haven't before. So it's a really special place to be right now. Um, for mm -hmm. those of you who are really struggling, I think that's maybe a nice reframe is just kind of like, it's a gift. It's a gift to be able to be in this space and have more awareness about yourself and the world around you. Mm -hmm. It really is. There's a lot. I feel like there's freedom to it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Cool. Eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know for some of you out there, we don't want to like, I don't want to gloss over the fact that some people are still, even light workers are still having kind of a hard time. So, and Denise and I, that's why we're here doing these conversations because we want to be vulnerable because everything is not, we have not totally arrived yet. Like we are still working through um, what it means to be this bright soul coming online in this space, you know, on this planet. So by no means are we are we passing judgment it's like not everyone is going to be in the same place but hopefully these solutions will help people will help you to land a little bit more within yourself and feel a little more comfortable and find a, a tribe and a community um, within us and we want to just talk a little bit before we go into silence about you know we've gone into the the old stuff and what to do to move through it but what happens when you have moved through it you know and you're able to kind of come to the place of a little more mastery at least what does it look like? You know, um, one of the things that we are really passionate about is bringing through the energy of focus towards the new earth and what that's going to look like. And we don't mm -hmm. know what it's going to look like, which is exciting. It's a little bit trepidatious, right? And we're all kind of like, what's going on? But it's also <laughs> like exciting, you know? So it is. Once you've moved past these spaces and you're able to, I think the good thing about right now is if so you take everyone, you take these solutions and before it might've taken you days to get through those feelings or stories. And now it's taking you maybe one day, or maybe it's taking you a few hours, or maybe it's taking you literally minutes to get through it. Like that's the journey, right? So once mm -hmm. you're in that space of knowing and recognizing that, oh, it's a little bit faster this time, then you can replace it with these thoughts and visions and feelings of what you want your reality to look like. Yes. Yes. What do you want to say about that? What do you think? I love it. I say, you know, sometimes people and myself included is like, what do I want it to look like? It's a little overwhelming or it can be overwhelming, but even breaking it down to being really simple. Like, do you want to have more laughter? Yes you know, and more connection or being around family or friends or community, kind of just breaking it down very simplistically to these simple things, like just more joy. I just want, or I want to have more fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like, what do you want it you to know? feel like? That's a good place to start. What do you want it to feel like? Yeah. You know, like forget about the visions. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want it to feel like? I, when Ian and I were talking about rejection, I'm like, you know, what if there was no rejection? We didn't have to worry yes. about it at all. Like, how would that yes. feel? What would you do? How would you step out of your house? And what choices would you make? Yeah, what if everyone was just accepting of everyone else? I mean, there would yeah. be peace on the planet, right? So that's what we're, that's, that's, I think it's the most important thing that we can do right now. 
besides moving out these imprints, is to really envision what we want that world to look like. Because the more people, like, you know, you have a couple thousand million people meditating on that, it's going to shift. It's going to shift mm -hmm. it. It's going to shift it fast. So yes. That's our work right now, everybody, you know, is to really, I love what you're saying, Denise, is to focus on the feeling, like, what is it that you want to feel? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're tired of comparison, you know, like, what if mm -hmm. everybody just lived the way they wanted to do and nobody had a focus on that? We were just mm -hmm. all in alignment, you know, or what if there was no more war? We know that's going away. You know what I mean? What if there was no conflict where everyone just allowed every country to be in their own space with their own people and the community. And they just existed the way they wanted to exist. Nobody was mm -hmm. trying to put like, that's the kind of stuff. And there's, it's limitless. You can go on and on, but it's so yeah. important right now. Yeah. And feeling, you know, safe. And yes. um, I heard you talking about the word trust. Like it's, that's not even going to be existing anymore exactly. because we, we all, will feel safe and there's no need to use the word trust because it's just there <laughs> yeah and we embody it it's just yeah we it's just part it. of who we are yeah 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 so yeah and if you're able to do that i say the next step is just to start what does that vision look like with those feelings yeah and Super. start simple exactly yeah. like do you want to live in community i know a lot of us out there want to have a piece of land we want to live in community do you want to live in the community of your family, your biological family or your soul family or your friend's family or however that looks, you know, but it's so important that we do that every day. You have to add one of the big, I don't want to say secrets, but one of the secret sauce or piece of creation within the quantum is that because we are human, we feel. So we do have to add the emotion to our visions. That is very important. So even if it takes you a little bit of time to get into the emotion of your, of your vision, um, cause sometimes it can feel like you have a vision, but you're not invested emotionally in it that will mm -hmm. come. So it's really important to really start building that and practicing that before you go to bed, before you wake up anytime in between you can, so just for like 30 seconds. That's all it takes. You know? Yes. Yes. That's what I've heard too. Like spending that 30 seconds and just focusing fully on that every day. Yeah, exactly. And then just yeah, pulling away the importance to it. So not putting too much energy on it. Because anytime we put energy on it, because if you are expecting something and you are kind of agitated or anxious about it, um, if you're trying to manifest them, any, any underlying anxiety or push will kind of neutralize everything, right? So you just want to kind of be like, okay, mm -hmm. if this happens, great. If it doesn't happen, I know something even better is going to come forth for me. I, I know that something that. even greater is going to be, you know, conceived for this new earth. So yeah, just kind of being in yes. the equanimity or zero point is really important also. Oh, good point. I love that. Yeah. Cool. Yay. Do you want to lead us silence? Okay. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we go into? I don't think so. I mean, this has been a really good discussion and conversation i'm excited to hear what everyone puts in the comments me too me too thanks everyone um, for being here yeah thank you all so much and thank you ina thank you of course um okay so i'm gonna guide us through a grab my clock a five minute meditation i'm gonna uh, bring us into a state of silence and then we'll stay there for five minutes Okay, so let's, you can keep your eyes open, you can close them, whatever's comfortable for you. And um, let's take a couple of deep breaths and just feel our feet on the ground or our butt in the chair, wherever you're sitting or laying down. And just feel that presence and that connection of your skin to the chair. And then I'd like for you or invite you to call in all your pieces, all the fragmented pieces that you've left at work or at your friend's house or anywhere or even different lifetimes. Just call
call them all back to you. Like they're having a big reunion and bring them into the center of your head, into a sphere, a golden sphere in the center of your head. And just see all these parts to you coming in. They're happy to be there. Even if they're not happy parts themselves, but they're they're glad to be back together. And just take a couple deep breaths here in the center of your head. And just feel what the word wholeness is to you when you think of wholeness. Just feel that frequency. And then when you feel ready, let's tr travel that sphere down Bring it down through your throat, down into your upper heart, and into your heart center. And just take some deep breaths and just be with all of these different parts of you in your heart center. that golden light in that sphere. And they're all safe in the whole. And then while we're sitting in this space, with your eyes closed or your eyes open, just let yourself be in this silence. <clears throat> you can just sit in your heart center and be in gratitude of the space, of this energy center that's full of wisdom and alignment and the connection to your soul. Or just be with what you're looking at in front of you. It's up to you where you want to put that attention. And let's sit together for five minutes. And focus on your breath.
So proud. And open your eyes if you've had your eyes closed. And come back into the room. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ina. Thank you, everybody. Just a little note. We're going to be doing that stillness practice every time we come on here for a conversation, mainly because it is hard sometimes for us to do it by ourselves. So we want to provide a space for you where you can do this as many times as you want with us and with the community. So um, yeah, that's that's our intent behind this practice every every conversation. So thank you, Denise. That was, wow, I needed that. Yeah, me too. Really nice. <laughs> I felt really good. I did. It felt so good. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Uh, Thank you so much <clears throat> for this conversation, Denise. I just, um, it's, yeah. Is there anything you want to add? Like, I just feel I'm so blissed out right now. I'm kind of like, mm. I know I'm good. <clears throat> like, yeah. It was a, there's a lot, a lot of information. Yeah, it was a lot was coming through. So for all of you who, good. yeah, for sure. For all of you who are, here watching thank you so much for being here please feel free to drop a comment again make sure you subscribe i know that I, I don't like to say that it sounds very salesy but it allows us to to support as many people as possible so what happens is the more people that subscribe and hit the notifications and like and all that kind of stuff the algorithm reads that unfortunately there is the algorithm and so that allows um, it to be shared um and we want to help as many people as possible. We want to build a community of, of people who feel resonant with this information. So that's what we're here for. I'm getting chills as I say that. So mm -hmm. please, you know, and a lot of people who watch the videos are not subscribed. And I know some people don't like being on YouTube. So we honor that for sure. Um, we're just glad you're here. So anyway, we will see you yeah. in the next conversation. Thanks, Denise. All right. Bye, guys. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>